is someone uh, tell you that an investment can double your money, it doesn't have any meaning because a lot of uh, investment can double your money. But like for a fixed deposit, it might take 20 over years to double your money. But some investment, if you do it all right, then you can double it fast. So the time, the duration, you have to specify it to make it meaningful. So when it comes down to time value for money, you have two value we'll be referring to. The first one is the present value, the money now, and what is the amount of money in the future. And what makes the future value bigger than the present value is the compounding rate. Let me give you a very simple example here. So if something that can give you 100% return in one day, so if you keep it there, your 100 ringgit will become 200 in one day, and then you keep it there some more, another day, it double again, become 400, right? And then you keep it another day, total of three days, it become 800 ringgit. If something gives you 100% return, day zero is 100 ringgit, so day one become 200, day two become 400, day three become 800. So if someone tell you that your investment your 100 ringgit will become 800 ringgit. So it's like 700% return. And the person tell you as a conclusion that you get 700% in three days. That means it is 223% a day. <laughs> so when someone say that to you, it's actually an insult to your intelligence. Because why do I say that? Another example is the same, it's the same thing. On day two, you have 400, right? So if you take day two's return, it is 300%. So 300% you divide it by two, that means it's 150% a day. So how is it different from the previous example? It's actually the same thing, but the return is different. It doesn't make sense, right? So in, in the real life also, like when people tell you to pay off your mortgage because you no, know, after you pay your mortgage for 30 years, the amount you pay is actually double of your loan. So that statement is meaningless, it's wrong, and it is misleading. That's why I say it is an insult to your financial intelligence. So the only meaningful thing to talk about in this comparison is the compounding rate. So for example, just now I've, I've talked about this. This is the same investment, 100% compounding rate. So you have your things double every day. So, whether you leave it in 100 days or 300 days or 2 days or 3 days, it's still the same thing because it's the compounding interest is 100%. You got what I mean? Let's say you borrow money from someone and he's charging you 5% a day. So, if you borrow from him 100 ringgit, and tomorrow you'll have to pay back 105 ringgit. But in the meantime, you find someone of a greater fool is <laughs> more stupid than you, then you lend that person money, C, I'll call that Mr. C, you lend it to him the same hundred ringgit, which is not yours because you borrow from Mr. A, and you lend it to Mr. C, but you charge him 10% return. That means tomorrow Mr. C is going to pay you back 110 ringgit. So it's not your money, you get 100 ringgit from Mr. A. You tomorrow have to pay back 105, but you will get paid by Mr. C, 110. So you make the difference of five ringgit. So this is a 5% here. So you can see this very simple example. Now we are just comparing the compounding rate. Right, so in, in this sense, you're actually making money from this deal. Although you are paying interest to Mr. A. And uh, how about the common dilemma we are facing every day? For a user person on the street, you have money, you want to put it in a bank, and of course when you put it in a bank, you are thinking about, should I put it in my saving account, or should I put it in fixed deposit? And a very simple uh, comparison, you'll be saying, oh, you know, saving account is less than 1%, but then FD is maybe giving you 2 over percent, the decision is very straightforward you will definitely put money in your fixed deposit because of the compounding rate is higher. 
then now you have decided that the, your extra money you want to have it uh, set aside in an FD because it's giving you return more than the saving uh, accounts but then during for so many FDs in the market you also want to do comparison and then you choose one that has the best deal right probably the, the highest uh, interest rate so if something is 2.5 and another one is 2.4 you will put it on 2.5 percent right so it's still very simple okay now let's go one step further so how about EBF compared to your home loan right, some people when they retire they will say okay now I am retired 55 years old I have so much money in my EBF but I don't like paying the bank interest on my mortgage so I still owe mortgage so what, what do you do? I'll say most people will take out their EPF money and they pay the mortgage and settle the loan so this is something that doesn't make sense because say for EPF is giving you a 5% return say 5% dividend every year and your mortgage is charging you maybe like 3.5% or 4% a year so the compounding rate in this example, you will know that like EPF, the compounding rate is higher. So why bother to take your EPF money to pay mortgage? So this is the part when people get confused. You see, when it is a loan, it still works the same way. Because the loan is your debt, right? Your liability. But it is the bank's asset. It's the bank's asset. So banks give you that money and they charge you interest so their interest is their return so it's actually the same thing so if they lend you 100,000 and they charge you 4% that means they are getting 4% from that 100,000 loan to you so that loan is their asset and they charge you 4% for that you know in fact it's the same thing your debt is the bank's asset so your EPF Right, EPF is your money, so EPF is your asset, your account, but the EPF is you know, the, the manager's uh, liabilities, right? Because they have to generate return and pay you. You see what I mean? Another similar situation is the ASB financing. So I'm not a Muslim, I'm not a Bumiputra, but uh, the Bumiputra in Malaysia, you can get ASB financing. So typically banks, uh, they charge the ASB financing with uh, the loan rate, you know, the compounding rate that is typically lower than your ASB return. So basically, bank is you know, lending you money so that you can make more money, then you can pay them. So in your case, I think this is actually the free money everybody in Malaysia who are Bumiputra can make use of. This scheme is not available to me, I cannot do that. I don't have the privilege to earn that money, but you do. So. Oh, why not do that, right? And some people will be confused that Oh, I have to pay the interest charges and all this and that But it just works the same way You compare the compound interest And you choose one with the higher one Your asset with a higher compounding rate You keep that, you do more of that And your loan, which is in lower rate Why bother to settle it, right? So about the questions whether you can make money with your ASB financing, the answer is yes, because bank currently they just charging you a very low rate like 3.5%, but you can get maybe above 5% uh, return, dividend return from ASB. So hope this uh, video clarify for you the time value of money. So whenever you have a different, different kind of schemes or loans or anything that's regarding money and you know, when you, you can compare like future value and present value. So the only thing you want to compare is actually the compounding rate. And when you understand the uh, time value of money and the importance of looking at the compounding rate. So the, the next question for you is, what is your compounding rate on everything you have? Like all your properties, your assets, your stocks, everything, your investments. And looking at the one of the richest person on earth nowadays, still alive, Warren Buffett, his compounding rate is around 20% a year. So if you want to be really, really good, if you want to accumulate really serious wealth, you have to know how to compound your money at a higher rate. 
So that is the important lesson in this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, my name is Casey Lau, a financial educator. So if you want to learn more, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you more often. Bye bye.